guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg, and today is Monday, February 11th, 2019, and already, don't mind him, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so, anyway. That's basically how this is gonna go. So just settle in, get your stitching, get your drink of choice, maybe a snack, and we'll go from there. So as I was saying, today is Monday, February 11th, 2019. This is episode 71. So, um, Remember when I talked about, you know, that for 2019, I was going to uh, focus on doing weekly videos and having them be a little shorter? That was fun, wasn't it? Fun while it lasted for both videos. Yeah, so life, work, things happen. So here I am. And I have a ton to show you and talk about and catch you up on. So anyway, uh, so what's been going on? Um, I had a finish. Actually, I had a couple of finishes. And so let's just dive right in, shall we? So my first finish was Salem Village by the Primitive Needle, which I keep writing down as um, Salem Remembered. Anyway, so this is one of my Stitch 9 challenge pieces, and I'm super thrilled with how it turned out. This is on 40 Count Dapple by Picture This Plus. And the chart calls for Floramil Silk, which is made by Gloriana. Um, I just converted it to overdyes of my choice. Um, and I think I talked about before that um, the thread that was called for was kind of a green to purple. Um, I think it was called thistle. And I actually found a thread in my stash called basil, which was a green to purple, which is what I used for the words Salem and village and then this little star here. There are some crazy noises coming from my dining room window, which is a little spooky. <coughs> I thought one of the cats was getting into something. But no, it's coming from outside. Okay, anyway, we're gonna try to ignore that. <coughs> and yes, I still have this cough. So, finish this. This is one of my Stitch 9 pieces, I already said that. And I'm super thrilled with how that this turned out. So happy about this. When I first saw Abby Bella stitch, stitch this, like just watching her stitch it, I absolutely fell in love with it and could not wait to stitch it for myself. And when I got this um, 40 count dapple, 
in an exchange, I thought this is the perfect thing to stitch on this piece. So, or stitch this piece on. So, very happy with it. Very happy to have it done. I am going to frame that. Um, I just need to go out and find a frame for it. And then I can put it on my gallery wall. Okay. My second finish, so last weekend, not this weekend we just had, but the one before, um, the first weekend of February, I went to a quilt retreat with some friends of mine. This is basically our in-town retreat that I've talked about before where um, we go, we take all our sewing stuff, quilting stuff, and you can leave your stuff there overnight. It's basically 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And um, I take the day off on Friday so that we can do three days. So we do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So um, that's what I did. We had a fantastic time. And um, my big thing that I wanted to get done was to finish my Tula Pink Foxtails quilt top which I was able to do. So um, I'm just going to insert a photo here. Of what the whole quilt top looks like. Um, this was actually a, it was a mystery workshop that Craftsy did back when Craftsy was Craftsy. Um, that was taught by Tula Pink and it was her design. Um, to be done in her Foxfield fabrics. And I think this was from like 2014, 13, something like that. Um, and mine had been still in the plastic from when I got it um, until after I finished my nightshade quilt top. And then I pulled out um, foxtails to work on and um, I was able to finish that up this past weekend. Um, so weird, like it's kind of creepy weird, the noises that I'm hearing. Very strange. And both of the cats are in sight, so I know it's not the cats. Um, like when I first heard the noise, I thought, who is getting into something? But it is actually coming from outside. So I'm just gonna keep recording and um, hopefully I won't get murdered. So, all right. Um, it's just really creepy. So anyway, um, I did have some problems with my quilt top putting it together um, and after talking to another quilter that had also done this quilt, um, she actually ended up with the exact same problems and so um, one of the problems is just inherent because it's diamonds and everything's on the bias. Um, which is just, unless you are super careful, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so, um, and then the other piece I think really had to do with the way that it was constructed. Nothing against Tula Pink, but um, there were pro there's probably a better way to construct it um, that would have allowed for less room for error. Um, but I was kind of glad to hear that I wasn't the only person that had problems with it. Um, I am hoping that some of the issues that I ran into will um, quilt out. Although any long armor hearing me say that will probably cringe <laughs> because there's only so much um, that you can quilt out. So, all right. It's kind of the equivalent of, you know, just put a belt on <laughs> like just belt it it'll be fine okay so foxtails cool top so I'm very happy about that um 
the rest of the weekend, we actually worked on learning how to put together um, the vinyl front project bags, um, much like these. So, um, unfortunately, I have all of the stuff to make mine, but my walking foot has gone on walkabout. I have no idea where it is. Still can't find it. It's around here someplace. And as soon as I find it, then I'm going to make a project bag or several. So that's what we did. We had a good time. Um, I very much needed to get away because work has been a little crazy. Um, but in the past week or so, it has calmed down significantly, which is great. Um, I needed that <laughs> most most assuredly so all right so what else am I going to talk to you about okay so last time I showed you um, my finishes for uh, my strawberries that I finished um, the stitching for and the Buffalo is back. Oh, yeah. I've been sitting here looking at it, but thanks, Tut, for reminding me. So, um, at our quilt retreat, let me just backtrack. So, at our quilt retreat, my friend Karen um, made us all these little bitty baskets. And um, mine obviously is Halloween and has these fantastic tombstones on it and tombstones on the inside and um, they say such things as I was hoping for a pyramid you're next over it but then the over is crossed out and it says under it um, well this stinks wish you were here <laughs> Pearl E. Gates. Um, so yeah, I'll be back. My favorite though is, um, I was hoping for a pyramid. So, <laughs> um, but I just love this so much. And um, I, you may remember, <coughs> Karen also made a larger basket um, for me a while back with Paris fabrics. Um, and so I love the little itty bitty, so fun. Um, and so anyway, okay. So, and Tuck keeps getting in the basket because I have something in there and he keeps pulling that out and playing with it. So, okay. So I'm going to go into whips now that we've talked about finishes. So I showed you my strawberries I showed you my um, uh, my blackbird stocking and uh, obviously I was working on Salem Village the last time we talked and then I also mentioned this project that was one of the projects that I took with me to Atlanta um, this is one, also one of my stitch nine challenge pieces um, I started this back in, what did we decide? Probably 2009. Um, at the latest, 2010. So, I took this with me. I did not work on it there. I only worked on my stocking and that was just a little bit. Um, but after I finished up, After I finished up Salem Village, see, I'm just all over the place, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Okay, so after I finished up Salem Village, then it was time to, it was the middle of January, it was the middle of the month, and so I was ready to start on the crowned bird sampler. So just ignore everything that I just said about simple things. 
So Crown Bird Sampler, this one. Um, so this is the piece that Paulette from Plum Street Samplers designed for my guild, the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild, back when she was here, 2013-ish. And um, so I was going to start this as a stitch along with um, Becky Socks for Mom and um, Rachel Stitch and Be Well, Mrs. Vensel. So we were gonna start around the 15th of the month. So I finished up Salem Village and then I was like, okay, time to get with it. So I got out my fabric, I got out my silks, I put some stitches in it, and then decided, mm, I'm not happy with this. And so here's, Here's what I think, you know, kind of played into that. So this is, thir it's on 36 count linen, which if you've been here for any period of time, you know that that is not my favorite because I like to have really good coverage. Um, 36 count, like two threads is too much. One thread isn't enough it's that in between limbo kind of fabric so I really like 40 but this was a big old piece of um, vintage meadow rue from Lakeside that was beautiful so I hated to waste it that's really kind of what it boiled down to and when I stitched the strawberry and when I stitched the uh, little tray. I didn't have any problem with it being 36 count. I thought my coverage was good. The black was a little iffy, but you know, black's always kind of iffy. So, uh, you know, I figured I'd be okay with the 36 count for my sampler. So I stitched, like I started up in this corner and I think I stitched like these two roses and then some of the green. Or I stitched one of these and then some of the green. And I was like, mm, I don't love it. So I decided to set it aside and I was like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna come back to it. I'm gonna stitch a second rose and maybe put, you know, something else in over here because there's a crown that you can't see right here where that blank spot is. Um, so I'm like, I'll stitch a couple, you know, more things and see what I think. So I came back the second night and I stitched another rose and I stitched that crown. And then I was like, yeah, okay, I really don't like it now because the thread for the crown I thought was way too light. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't even show up on this picture. So, but it's the same color as like this base and this right here. So I'm like, maybe it's just a lighter part of the skein. I don't know. And one of my roses was the darker of the red in Sister Scarlet, which is a problematic thread anyway. One of them was on the lighter end. And I was like, I don't love this. I'm not happy with it. I don't even know if I want to continue. So I got some feedback. And I have to say that, you know, both of the people that gave me feedback were like, I think the coverage is fine, but if you don't like it, don't keep stitching it. <laughs> like switch out the fabric, sell your fabric, buy a new piece, whatever. So by that point, I had decided that
I acknowledge that there were other things that were going on. And as is often the case with me, when my anxiety is up or I'm super stressed or whatever, I tend to get like really like, I don't want to say OCD, but I get really kind of controlling about my stitching. And if it's not exactly the way I want it, or, you know, I start to kind of pick it apart. Um, no. That's not yours. Um, so I decided that the best thing that I could do was to just put the piece away and come back to it when I was feeling better because I had a sneaky suspicion that a lot of what I was feeling about it didn't have anything at all to do with the piece. So rather than making any rash decisions or forcing myself to work on it when I knew I wasn't happy with it, not gonna do it. So I set it aside and I decided I'm gonna stitch on something totally different. And so that's where, now we get back to the beginning of the story. That's where the simple things comes in. So I had already pulled this out because I was gonna work on it in Atlanta and didn't. So it was right on the top of the pile. So I got it out and worked on it. And this is on very 30 count see-through fabric. So you are just going to have to bear with me um, because it may be a little difficult to show. So I got a lot done actually. So when I picked this up, um, I had all of the leaves stitched with one color. But as you can see, a lot of them have two colors in them. So the first thing that I did was I went in and I filled in the second color on all of the leaves and got that done. And then I started working on the border because the border had not been started at all. So I started the border and got, you know, like halfway, a little over halfway done. And then I came in and I stitched that little flower bud there at the bottom. And then I started doing some of the over one pieces. So I stitched patience, which I thought was um, appropriate. <laughs> I stitched hope and faith. I stitched my initial. And then I went back and I stitched the bird. So that's kind of where I got to on this. Um, and I was, you know, very happy with it, very excited to keep working on it. I was happy with the colors. They were making me, you know, super happy, I guess. Um, <laughs> and this was like, it, this project was exactly what I needed. I needed something that I wasn't having to fight with, that wasn't you know, giving me a lot of decision points. I needed something that was fairly easy and straightforward and, you know, whatever. And it had been so long since I worked on this that I'm really not even sure why I set this aside. Um, but, and these curry colored yellow flowers, oh my God. I love these like those are my favorite that kind of curry mustardy yellow so I'm stitching this with the called for threads on the called for linen um, which is they're all weeks dye works threads and this is on 30 count Marva's blend by R&R which is what it called for. So two over two, and um, except for the over one parts. And I'm just loving it. So, 
And the fabric, it's obviously really hard to see in this light, but it is, it's almost got kind of a peachy, pinky sort of tinge to it. I'm never gonna get it to show up what color it is, but anyway. Um, but really happy with it. Really, really enjoyed working on it. Maybe if I hold it up against the white, that gives you a little better idea of the color. Yeah. So, really enjoyed working on this. And I would have kept working on it, except something happened. And I know, I know that Jessie Marie has already said she and Michelle Bendy are not to blame. But in my case, they are. <laughs> so, so I'm stitching along on this, minding my own business happy as a little clam and I go and I watch Jessie Marie's video and she's talking about School of Magical Stitches and literature and I'm like huh that's really cool and you know of course it's Harry Potter themed which I love it's stitching challenges which I'm in eh, don't always love <laughs> but um, the one of the big things that got me was that it's also about rereading or reading for the first time in some people's cases, the Harry Potter books in 2019. And I thought, you know what? I would really love to do that. It has been a long time since I read those books and I would really love to reread them. So, you know, it kind of got my interest peaked and I went immediately from Jesse Marie's video to Michelle's video. Um, and in her video, there she was, and she was talking about the School of Magical Stitches in Literature, and she's like, these are the challenges, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm stitching on, and this counts for this, and I have to do this many stitches on this piece. And I was like, okay, I've got to go check this out. So I joined up, so it's a Facebook group, um, and... It's run by by two floss tubers, um, and I will put a link to um, to the group somewhere down below or whatever show notes if I ever get around to them. Um, so it's run by a couple of floss tubers, and the way that it's basically set up is uh, you join and then you get sorted into a house. Um, they, you know, try to accommodate your first choice of house that you would like to be in, but they are also trying to keep it even so that approximately the same number of people are in each house so that nobody gets an unfair advantage. Um, and then once you get sorted, then you are earning points for your house. Um, and they have divided it up so the way that the reading is scheduled so there are seven years seven books right um, so January is what they are considering year one and um, so the reading for January was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets sorry uh, in the Sorcerer's Stone year two uh, is February reading uh, Chamber of Secrets and then of course as the books get larger they've split them up into you know two months so they've basically you know divided up the year into seven years and so there will be a house cut for each year so January January was year one and February is year two if that makes any sense uh, and um, so there are stitching challenges and there are reading challenges and there are um, for the stitching 
there are weekly homework assignments and you get an assignment, you have a certain number of stitches you have to stitch. Um, typically you would post, you know, your before pick of your piece and then your after pick and um, once the homework is graded, then if you earned points, those would go towards your house. Um, there are house common rooms that are set up so you can visit with other people that are in your house. Um, Along with the weekly homework assignments, there are also monthly extra credit. Um, and then there is yearly extra credit or extreme challenges that you can do. Um, and for reading, um, like I said, you know, it's rereading the Harry Potter books. So you can earn points for doing that in the month of, you know, whatever's on the schedule. Or there are additional challenges where if you're not wanting to read Harry Potter, you can read, you know, specific challenges like a, uh, a book with a vehicle on the cover or a building on the cover, you know, things like that. Or um, the title or author has one of the letters in the word Hogwarts, something like that. So... <clears throat> I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a try because the way that Jesse Marie um, mentioned it and the way that Michelle mentioned it, you know, they're both managing to, <coughs> sorry, they're both managing to accommodate their stitching goals, like on their Stitch Nine Challenge or what they had already planned to work on within the confines of doing homework assignments. So while you have a specific assignment, you have some leeway as to how you want to interpret that assignment. Like, you know, a book with a house on the cover or a building on the cover. That's pretty wide. So, um, <clears throat> so I thought, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. And I'd really like to focus on my Stitch Nine um, challenge pieces um, and Jesse Marie has mentioned you know in uh, in one of the homework assignments that they had one where they were you know you have to stitch on a plant or a project with a plant and I was like ah perfect got that um, so that's obviously that homework assignment was already over but that's one of the things that I was like okay I can see how I can make this work in my advantage to my advantage um, <clears throat> so uh, I was kind of mulling this over the other day because I was talking to somebody about stitch alongs and I typically fail miserably at them. One of the reasons is because either I fall behind and then I feel like I'm never going to catch up. So I just toss it aside or, um, you know, I run into some sort of problem or, you know, whatever. Um, like with the crown bird. So um, what I like about this is that instead of being a stitch along per se, it is a challenging me to, you know, work on the things that I want to work on, but it's giving me a push in a certain direction to work on something that maybe I hadn't really wanted to work on. As the case may be so the first week that I joined so I was sorted into Slytherin um, which was not my first choice but that's okay um, because that's not my official house anyway um, I'll let you guys guess what you think my, <laughs> my official actual house is it's not Slytherin um, so I got sorted and so that week, the first week that I was a member was like the last bit of January and the beginning of February. And so because it was like a short week and because it was, you know, year one was ending and year two was starting, the way that they divided up the homework that week was, um, by January 31st, you had to stitch 300 stitch stitches on your least favorite whip. 
So I was like, huh, what could that be? Anybody remember this? <laughs> yes. So this is Colonial Garden by Plum Street Samplers stitched on 40 count black linen. This has been my nemesis for years, which is why I put it on my stitch nine challenge because I wanted to get the flipping thing done. And there's more up there. Um, so when your homework tells you to do 300 stitches on your least favorite project, I thought, okay, here we go. This is where the rubber meets the road. So I did not quite get 300 stitches in, but I did give it a good try. Um, 300 stitches was hard to do on this. But um, I basically was focusing on this big flower here in the middle. So I think I did a lot of the stems and leaves and that sort of thing. Um, so I did work on this until the 31st <clears throat> and then on the 1st, which was actually, I think my first day of my quilt retreat when I was like not stitching, <laughs> you had, so that was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you had basically three days to do, or maybe it was, I don't remember what the days were anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so three days and you had to do 300 stitches on a whip that is in prison. So <laughs> I thought, well, Colonial Garden's been in prison for quite some time, but I am feeling better. So why don't we go back to Crown Bird and let's see if it's just me or what. And this is in my um, Socks for Mom bag. <clears throat> Beautiful. So I picked this up and I decided, okay, I'm going to do my 300 stitches on it. I'm just going to just keep going. And if at the end of 300 stitches, then I can make a decision. So I picked it back up and actually got a good bit done. Um, I did not meet the 300 stitches. I just didn't get it done in time with being gone to my quilt retreat. But What I decided was that I am actually fine with the coverage. Um, I think the coverage looks fine. Even on the black, which is not too bad. It's a little thin, but not too bad. Um, but I do think this crown is too light because from back here, you can't see it at all. You can see it there, but it's super light. Now, I stitched this one in a different silk um, that is a little brighter to see if it shows up better, and I do think it shows up better. Um, I'm gonna leave those two, and I think I'm going to use my yellow silk, but use a like the darker part of the skein and see what I think about that. But I do think that this is too light. So I think that's gonna have to come out. The question is just, do I go with this? Do I go with something darker? Do I go with, you know, what's called for, but just use the darkest part? But, um, yeah. So I'm good with it. So I did try to do the 300 stitches, like I said, didn't quite make that. Um, but then the 
next week's um, homework came out, homework assignment came out. And so that was, um, because we had a full week, um, that was to do um, Polyjuice Potion. And so you were going to stitch 100 stitches each on seven projects that are representative of the different of the seven different ingredients in Polyjuice Potion. And so the first one um, was for a project that had grass in it. Um, and the crown bird piece had grass in it. So I just kept going on it, stitched my hundred stitches. And then uh, one of the items was, um, since there is an ingredient, you know, to have something from the person that you want to turn into, it was a project that you were enabled or influenced by someone else. And so I thought this was a good, um, a good piece to do since um, Rachel and Becky really, you know, enabled me to finally start this after all these years. So I did another 100 stitches on it. And so, um, like I said, I didn't quite get my 300 stitches in. I got close-ish. So I probably got close to 500 stitches in on this as part of homework for the beginning of February and then last week for two assignments. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm pleased with how it's looking. And like I said, I think this fabric is going to be fine. I need to work out the deal with the crown is the only thing. And so the, this is all done in silks. And what it calls for is Belle Soie, I think it's Scarecrow. Yeah. So you can see it's got lighter and darker spots to it. So I think it, maybe it's just a matter of trying to find a darker spot. Um, and I pulled like all of my Sister Scarlet thread that I have um, because like I said, it's a problematic thread and none of the skeins are the same color. So do with that information what you will. This is what I pulled that I stitched that second crown out of. It is a rainbow gallery, splendor silk. And so it's a little brighter, it's a little darker, um, not variegated, but I'm okay with that. So, um, but we'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to try one more crown when I get to one and we'll see what I end up choosing. But I am, I am so happy that I picked this back up and I'm happy that I did it as part of homework challenges because it did kind of enable me to push through and say, okay, I'm going to do 300 stitches and I'm going to see what I think. And if I still don't like it, then I'll just check it. So, um, but I think we figured out that that was just me being contrary. So, um, then I had, um, uh, ingredients for, a, a project that is uh, a night scene or is stitched on dark fabric. You guessed it. So I picked this back up and did another hundred stitches on it. And I think I did like these flowers maybe. And then it called for instead of leeches, it called for something that sucks. So I did another hundred stitches on this. So I've actually gotten a good amount of stitching in on this, even though it's on my stitch nine 
and I do dearly want it finished, I would not have picked this up and worked on it if it hadn't been for those homework assignments. So they are really proving to be helpful, particularly on pieces that I wasn't sure about or pieces that are difficult because it's so much easier to do it in small doses of 100 stitches, right? So then I had three more ingredients um, and I decided that I really wanted to pick up Black and Sky because Dark 13 Stitching is coming up this week and so I wanted to pick up Black and Sky and work on it. And this is also one of my Stitch 9 pieces. So I got this back out. I'm working on block two. And um, I did this for three assignments. So one was for um, lace wing flies. So something that flies. And this has obviously an angel with wings plus several birds. Um, and then I did for, oh, for powdered bicorn horn. Uh, which was something that was hard to come by, hard to find. This is obviously a very hard to find chart. So uh, this one fit the criteria, so another 100 stitches. And then finally, the last piece was um, for the boom slang skin to do something that has skin. And so right here there is a lady um, that has skin, and so this project qualifies. So. Um, I basically worked on this monument. So I basically got all of that stitched with my 300 stitches. Um, and so then I was finished with my homework early. Um, I got all 700 stitches in. And so then I decided to do some of the February extra credit. And so one of the first ones is to do 500 stitches on a piece with words. And so as you can see, this has words. So I decided to just keep going on this. And so um, last night I worked on this flower pot. And so I think I put in maybe 300-ish stitches on that. And so I am stitching this on the called for fabric, which is 40 count vintage pear by Lakeside. Um, so it's kind of a greenish fabric and then it's got sort of the brown modeling over it. Um, and I'm stitching it with the called for pure palette silks, um, which are luscious. And uh, they're just, they are lovely, lovely to stitch with, and I absolutely love the way that they look stitched up. So, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed working on this. Um, so I've got a little bit more to go until I get my 500 stitches for extra credit, but I do have all month to do that. So, um, then the, and so Colonial Garden and, uh, which up until now has been in a <coughs> Ziploc bag, um, has been moved to this Mama Joan bag that, um, that a friend of mine gifted to me, which I absolutely love. And um, so you can see some of the pure pellet silks in here. I've got Black and Sky in here too, so. And yes, I do have two pairs of readers because I have to use my 2.5s to stitch on Colonial Garden and then I can use my 1s or my 1.25s um, to stitch on everything else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed stitching on Black and Sky. So the new homework assignment came out this morning. Uh, they usually come out, like the homework usually runs until midnight PST uh, on Sundays. And uh, then you have to have all your stuff uploaded and, you know, pictures and your posts updated and all that. Um, 
And so then the new homework assignment came out this morning. And so it is for, it's 200 stitches each on a project that you have modified, um, which of course harkens back to the Polyjuice Potion. Um, a project with a cat in it, since Hermione turned into a cat by mistake. Um, and a project with a ghost. So 200 stitches, they can all be the same project or they can be three different projects. So a project you modified, a project with a cat in it, and a project with a ghost. So my wheels started turning this morning and I was like, Blackest sky doesn't really count. Like I can't really figure out how to fit it in there because I obviously haven't done any modifications on it. I mean, called for threads, called for fabric. So I got to thinking about, you know, what's on my stitch nine that would fit into one of these categories. And uh, I had a hard time finding something. So I sort of worked my way backwards and my Lady Jeanette project bag that I made. I know I have something with a ghost in it that is on my Stitch Nine challenge. And that is my Halloween neighborhood which it's probably been a while since you've seen this so the last thing I stitched was up here and I stitched these witches and the thing before that was this tree so um, I have several ghosts on here including um, the ghost smoke here and here and then of course I have ghosts here um, and this whole thing is a modification so I could easily use this for modification and ghosts and of course there are cats on here so there's a big one right there um, but there's also a cat down here there's a cat here. <laughs> um, there are cats here. There's a cat here. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, this could easily fit all three things. And with it being dark October stitching, also an appropriate piece to stitch on. Here's the problem. I know the other things that I want to put in here, but I haven't like totally figured them out and figured out what's going to fit where and pulled threads and all of that malarkey. So I am going to use this for ghosts. And hopefully that will buy me a little time that I can figure out what I want to stitch. I don't have to stitch a ghost, but um, I can figure out what I want to stitch next and start to put that in. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on something that's not on my Stitch 9 challenge, but something that I do still want to work on this year. And that is my dark beauty, AKA Dutch beauty. And so this absolutely a thousand percent counts as a, a modification. You think? Because it's all modified. <laughs> so um, for those of you that may be new and haven't seen this, so this is a, um, a 
reproduction sampler by Permit of Copenhagen called A Dutch Beauty 17 something something. I think I have my chart here someplace. 1790. This is what it's supposed to look like. And it's very sort of pale and very Dutch springtime is what I like to say. And mine is very German dark forest. <laughs> That's where I'm going with this. So I am stitching this on 40 count linen that I dyed myself and it is showing up a little purple on the screen it is not purple it is gray um it is that's probably closer it is gray gray um beautifully modeled I'm very happy with how it turned out um this started out as uh I think Zweigart Mallow which from what I understand is kind of a weird fabric but worked good for me um and I am converting all of the colors. I'm changing all of the colors. So um, obviously I'm going much darker in my color palette and um, I'm kind of picking colors as I go. So I started kind of working across down here in the border. I started kind of working on this next page. So this right here is basically a page. And I think there are like 26 pages or something. Um, so I think I'm gonna work on this and do 200 stitches for a project I modified. And then 200 stitches for a project with a cat in it because my lion here the moderators did confirm counts as a cat so i am going to use dutch beauty and do 400 stitches so 200 for each assignment and get that done and it'll feel good to work on this and get a little further on it um I got really nervous about whether or not my fabric was going to be the right <laughs> size, so I kind of worked over to this corner and now I'm kind of working up <laughs> to this side to make sure I have enough room before I get too far along. Um, so and this lives in this ginormous bag and the reason being is that one my q snap fits in here and two I have this whole like bag of threads that i'm pulling from and some of them are silk and some of them are dmc and i don't care one way or another um and some of them are um, over dyed, it's like I'm using uh, Gentle Art Cinder, Cinders, which I love. Um, so, anyway. So, 400 stitches on Dutch Beauty. That's my point. And hopefully that will buy me enough time to figure out the ghost situation. Um, and figure out what I'm going to stitch on, on this piece. Now, you don't have to stitch all of the assignments. There are penalty stitches that you can do. So like if you, don't, if you don't have a project that has a ghost in it, you can't do 200 stitches. So you do a penalty of 400 stitches on something that doesn't meet the criteria. Um, you can do that. You can just not do the homework assignment. Totally up to you. Um, but I'm enjoying the challenge of it. I'm enjoying um, trying to figure out how my pieces that I want to work on will fit in. Um, this week was a little challenging because I was like, ooh, 
all of my things I've been working on won't really work. Now what? Um, but I'm, I'm happy to work on Dutch Beauty for a little bit. I'm happy to work on my Halloween neighborhood if I can figure out what to put on there um, or where to put it, which is more apt. Um, I do have kitted up my next Blackbird stocking uh, to do for uh, February, which is going to be this daffodil. Um, but I couldn't really figure out a way to make it fit in here either. So I may see if I can try to fit this in like with an extra credit assignment or maybe something next week. Or if I get these done, um, get my assignment done quickly, then I can switch over to this and get this done. We'll see. Um, but like I said, also, I do want to make sure that I get my dark 13 stitching in on Wednesday. Can't forget that. That's important. So those, that's kind of what I've been working on and why I've been working on it. So like I said, I'm having a good time with the uh, magical stitches. Um, you can go look at that hashtag on Instagram and see the people posting on it. Um, I'm having a good time with it. And so I'm going to keep doing it as long as it's fun. So let's see, what else did I have to share with you? Okay, a couple other things. So at Guild, at Tudor Rose, which was last Tuesday night, um, we didn't meet in January because our meeting would have fallen on January 1st. So last week was our first meeting of the year and we did our, what we called our magic reveal. So magic, uh, which you've heard me talk about before, is my annual good intentions contract. And so last year, the two pieces I had on my magic were Anniversaries of the Heart and my Mystery Nine Chatelaine. Obviously, I finished my Chatelaine. Anniversaries of the Heart, I gave it a good college try, but didn't finish it. That's just the way it goes. So it's on my magic for this next year, as well as Crown Bird. And then I think I put two other things. I think I put... I think I put Colonial Garden and I think I put, I may have put Black and Sky, I may have put Sampler Sisters, I don't remember. But for the folks that um, participated in Magic, we got these fun little scissor fobs or zipper pulls, whichever your preference, which I thought was fun. And that's been in my little basket here, which Tut has been trying to abscond with. So that was a little fun thing. And then we also got um, these pins that um, one of the board members had made for us. So it's a Tudor Rose, and then down here at the bottom, it's hard to see but it actually says TRSG for Tudor Rose Sampler Guild. So, super fun. I don't know if I want to leave that as a pin or maybe I'll make it into a needle minder. I don't know, but super cute. And then they had, for everybody that finished a magic piece, they had a drawing for different, um, different things. Uh, they had Tudor Rose scissors, the matte black ones, which I'm like enamored with and really want. Um, they had Tudor Rose fabric project bags. Um, so super fun stuff. Um, so I don't, I don't really have any haul other than these little gifties that I got. Um, so reading, so last time we spoke, 
I had finished Winter Street and I picked back up Drawing of the Three. I did finish that, um, really enjoyed it. I was glad I had the opportunity to kind of get back to it. And then I was going to go back to another book that I had <coughs> kind of in progress, which is um, Murder on the Orient Express. But with going to uh, Magical Stitches, I decided I'm going to pick back up the Harry Potter books and read them. Um, I did not get this one finished in January, but I am still reading it and still enjoying it. I'm going to try to finish it up so that I can start and finish Chamber of Secrets by the end of the month. So then I'll be back on track. And you do get points for reading too. So stitching and reading. So I think that's all that I have to show you. Um, I knew I had a big pile. I know I'm over an hour. Um, you know, what can I say? So, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please, um, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell your friends. And, um, you can find me on Instagram as Cozy Egg on Ravelry, although I'm very rarely there because I haven't been knitting, also as Cozy Egg, Pinterest, etc. So, um, show notes will eventually be on my blog. You can also go to my blog at any time and look back at some of my past projects, etc., all of that good stuff, um, which is at CozyEgg.CozyEggDesigns.com or you can just go to CozyEggDesigns.com and navigate to it from there. So, thanks so much everybody for joining. I appreciate it. I am not going to make any promises about when I will be back or how short or long that next video will be. So, um, thanks for joining and happy stitching. <laughs>